So it's a little bit hidden, but the Z6 II has automatic bracketing for exposure, flash, white balance, and active D lighting to help you out in a variety of scenarios. <laughs> think that this is an excellent lens. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and professionally I'm a software developer but in my free time I love landscape photography and making related videos here on YouTube. In today's video I wanted to give you a full walkthrough of the bracketing on the Nikon Z6 II. I've talked about bracketing a couple times before as I'm using it, but I thought that it would be worthwhile to make an entire video about it since it is such an important feature for landscape photography as well as some other types of photography. I'll show you how to turn on and use the bracketing, set which type of bracketing you're using, and put it in the menu for quick access. But first, for anyone who's not familiar with the term, what is bracketing? Bracketing is taking the same shot at different settings, most often at different exposures. This can be helpful to ensure that you get a shot with the correct settings, or you can actually use it to combine shots in your post-processing later on through something like an HDR merge or other manual combination to get the final shot that you want from your bracketed photos. You can bracket your shots by hand by manually changing the settings between shots, but that's a little bit of a fuss to do, so most modern cameras offer some form of automatic bracketing where you can set the camera to bracket your shots for you. When you combine this with the burst mode, it's much easier to get bracketed shots quickly and consistently, even handheld. The bracketing on the Z6 II is located under the photo shooting menu, which you can access by pressing the menu button and then selecting the second option with the camera icon. Auto bracketing is toward the bottom, so just scroll down until you find it. Once there, you'll see three options, auto, bracketing, set, number of shots, and increment. Now, if you use the right arrow to enter the auto bracketing set, you can select the type of bracketing that you actually want to use. And you need to know that AE stands for auto exposure, WB stands for white balance, and ADL stands for active D lighting, which is Nikon's system to balance shadows and highlights in high contrast images. The options here then are exposure and flash, exposure, flash, white balance, and active D lighting, and whichever you select is what the camera is going to change between your bracketed shots. I typically keep this on the second option, the exposure bracketing, which is what I use the most and I think that most other photographers are likely to use this most as well. But if you're using a flash, you can set it to bracket both the exposure and flash or just the flash there, assuming that your flash supports being controlled by the camera in that way. If you are really concerned about the white balance or the shadows and highlights, those options are there as well. Now for exposure or flash bracketing, you'll have to set the number of shots and the increment options. The number of shots is how many photos will be taken and can be set at odd increments from zero to nine where zero is the bracketing turned off. The increment is the number of stops of exposure that you'll have between those photos. So if you wanted a photo at one stop below and one stop above your settings, you'd set the number of shots to three and the increment to one. As you use this, you'll get a bit more of a feel for it, but uh, it can just be a little bit of trial and error on location to figure out your light and what settings you need. Once you have the bracketing turned on, a new indicator will appear on the right side of the screen which tells you what type of bracketing you have turned on and how many shots are remaining in your bracketed set. As you shoot, the camera will count those down. Uh, that allows you to easily see when bracketing is on and to make sure you stay on track with your bracketed shots, which is really helpful. In addition to turning the auto bracketing on, you're probably going to want to put your camera into a burst mode to make it a little bit easier to take all of the shots. The camera has a dedicated burst mode button down at the bottom, so you can just press that and select the burst mode. When you have the burst mode on with the bracketing, what the camera is actually going to do is take all of the shots while you have the button held down that are in your bracket and then it's going to stop at the end. So you can turn on the burst mode and just hold down the button until you have the requested number of shots and the camera will stop for you. 
Another thing you can do is use bracketing with the timer. You might want to do that in situations where you're trying to avoid the camera shaking or uh, if you're using the timer to get yourself into the shot. When you have the bracket turned on and the timer turned on, the camera will take all the bracketed photos in sequence after your timer ends. So you could put the camera on a tripod, set the timer to say a two second timer and let it take all of the shots on its own. All right, so now you should have some understanding of when you might want to use automatic bracketing and how to use it, but how can you get to it more easily than digging in the menus? Let me show you how you can add this into the iMenu so that you can quickly access it easily in the field. To do this, go to the menu, navigate down to the custom settings, go to the control section and select customize iMenu. From there, click on any item on the grid and then select auto bracketing from the list and save it to that position. Now, when you're shooting photos, you'll be able to hit the I button at any time and open the auto bracketing section. From there, you can select the type of bracketing, number of shots, and increment very easily. Now, anytime you need some variation in your shots, you can easily set the camera to do that automatically while you rapidly fire shots in a burst or timer mode to keep them lined up even when you're hand holding the camera. So that's all for this video, but if you did enjoy it, don't forget to hit the like button on your way out and to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more videos that I'm really excited to share with you in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.